Hi. So today we're going to have a little bit of fun trying to make something out of pretty much nothing because I was challenged to this <laughs> by the lovely Macy to basically glam up a maternity shoot. And the thing was, this is another one of those challenges that I was kind of thrown on because I wasn't really sure exactly what Macy had in mind. Obviously, I have to bring my own interpretation to it. So um, I go through that whole thought process of, you know, is this really what they want to see? I don't know. Um, so anyway, I just thought, I'm not going to go out and spend a whole heap of money buying things. I don't do glitzy, beady things. I'm, I'm not that type of person. Sometimes, you know, I don't mind them, but it is more of a, a, a subtle, I suppose, um, approach to glamming something up. But yeah, I wanted to show, I suppose, today how I use the shape of the body and not that we've really got a body here that we can work with, but I've got a mannequin that we're going to work with and I'm going to do a few things. She's with some got a fabric. belly. But I love to, to basically shape the body in a way that really does make the woman the most elegant part of a photograph. So it's not about the gown, it's about the person in the gown, if that makes sense. Yeah. I want to create shape and... Ah, oh, thank you. Someone said my hair looks good. Um, yeah, but I want to use materials and, and different things to basically um, allow the, the person to be the hero of the shot, not the dress itself. So for me, it's not really about that. All right. So hi, everyone. Welcome. I love seeing where you're all from. We've got someone from Philadelphia watching. This is going to be very good. Garrett has dressed up before. Yes, he has. He's a good sport. Um, <laughs> I do, I do love playing in the studio and he's always up for absolutely anything but today I actually needed him on the other side of the camera <laughs> to make sure that you can all see this. So we've got our little mannequin over here and basically what I'm going to do is show you how to use different pieces of fabric that you might have or you could invest in if you don't have them and get a few different looks out of them. So that way, you know, your, your budget's going to stay nice and low in terms of out, you know, um, paying, paying for different elements and items because I know it can get expensive. And don't get me wrong, I have beautiful maternity gowns that I have purchased from So Trendy, Mia Stilio, and, um, oh, and there's another one. Um, that I think I'll think of in a minute, and that's the thing. Um, Erin, Elizabeth, no, what did I say? Eden Elizabeth, <laughs> get it right, Kelly. Um, so yes, uh, so trendy, and is is the other one if I didn't mention it. But yeah, my brain's going 100 miles an hour here because I do get um, I do get a little excited when I get to create. It's you know, it's it's what I love to do. It's crafting Thursday. Yes. Anyway, I'm going to show you some pictures first of some different things that I have done in the past let me just bring and those Garrett's gonna in. bring those up because um, you know I, I love a very simple approach to styling I like to kind of um, keep it sort of very um, plain I suppose <laughs> yes I'm, I'm often called that is the grouch. correct word yes and whilst Garrett is bringing those up for you I'll show you what I've got I have a lot of chul, and the thing is, I didn't go out to buy chul. There was a, um, a, a time when we had a sort of a D stash here, like a market stall in our warehouse, and we had other photographers come and just sell things. So it was like a market day, so you could sell old things that you didn't need. Anyway, one lady was selling a roll of chul, and I'm like, well, that'll come in handy one day. And I have actually used this multiple times. I don't know how many meters there were on the actual roll, but you can buy this really cheap. And you can have a lot of fun with it. It gives you great texture. And obviously you can get different types of chul in terms of um, the firmness of it and the stretch. This one is quite, quite firm. And then I've got another style down here that um, is a little finer and it's softer so it wrinkles up a lot easier. So I like to use both together yeah. and to create different looks. And the other thing I've got here is a 10 meter roll of calico. 
And I bought this just, I mean, from a store here in Australia called Spotlight. So it's just a fabric store and um, it's just literally a 10 meter roll of calico. So I'm going to show you how um, I would style that around someone. And I might cut it, I might not. It, um, it doesn't really matter. And then obviously I've got just a plain piece of material here. You can see my, my mannequin wearing her lovely fake belly. But yeah, that's just a bit of fabric that I'm going to use. So I'm not actually going to use a gown today. I'm just going to use material. And then over here, I'm going to do a black look. And this is very similar type of material. It's just a plain black fabric. This is probably the first thing I bought when I, when I started my photography business. I still have it. It's got marks on it. It's just like a lycra stretch. It's not shiny. And I used to clamp it up to a backdrop to put my couples in front of when I went to their homes. So I'm going to use that. And then if you watched my live last Friday when I did the, the shoot with Mackenzie, this was um, the bottom of a skirt that I cut off. So basically it sat around the bottom of like a fishtail skirt. And it was, it was such a beautiful shape. But what I did was threaded the hem of it with wire. So you can see my bits of wire there. I threaded it so that I could, you know, mold it and give it some shape that way and we had a little bit of fun. So I'm going to use that as well. Kelly, can you recall where you got the fake belly from? Oh, do you know, Sue Bryce bought that um, for the baby summit when the very first baby summit when she was yes. doing a maternity posing demonstration. I believe she may have got it on Amazon. I'm not. 100% sure but um, after the baby summit it weighs quite a lot she did not want to uh, travel back to the United States with that in her luggage so she gifted it to me <laughs> and it's been great because um, often you know we are stuck in situations where we, we need uh, models and can't quite get someone yeah let's start with this first image here all right so this is a, a perfect example of a piece of fabric and <laughs> I have actually used this material to wrap around her body and clamped it at the back. Mm -hmm. And then the piece of fabric is just a very, very sheer piece of fabric that um, I actually don't have it here, but uh, it was, I believe, a cheap curtain. Yeah, it's a softer sort of, it's a yeah. net, it's a truly sort of thing, but it's real soft, isn't it? So, and what I do to get them, you know, beautiful, um, that beautiful sort of flowing soft look is I just steam them. I've bought a steamer from Kmart for 50, $50, 50 Australian dollars, yeah. and I used that. And then the headpiece that's there, if you watched the live the other day, the headpiece was made out of these flowers and um, I used them in the backlighting live and my mother gave me these. <laughs> I mean, she had them in a vase in her home and she didn't want them anymore and, she, and I said, well, I'll use them. You've I had could, those for years. I have had them literally. So what I love the most is that you can bend the stems and shape them and that's why I use them for a lot of different looks. And do you know what? Um, well, can we go full screen here for a minute? Yeah. No, actually don't. Go to the next photo because ah. I'll, I'll use them later. Okay. So the next one is the one that I just had up there, which is the um, so side same, view. Yep, same fabric, same, same model, just a different pose and backlighting it to give it a different look. But I love very, very simple classic photographs like that. And then the next one, um, this is Chul. So chul actually works better in water and you can see the water um, or the chul underneath the water there and I've given it a very matte look. Mm. It did use um, um, a little bit of dry ice there but obviously we took all safety precautions um, so that it wasn't anywhere near our model and we made sure that the water was nice and warm for her to lay in so that she wasn't cold. We also, when I... Um, filled up the little pool, I underneath um, underneath the, the pool, and it was made out of plastic, like a kid's blow up pool, uh, underneath it were a whole heap of pillows and things like that, so it was nice and comfortable. And I'll get to that in a moment when I talk about the comfort of your clients and models. Okay, next one there. And this one, the, she's not 
not pregnant, but she does have just a bit of fabric and just that little bit of floating movement always creates um, such a very different look. And then the next one's one of my all time favorites. And that again is just a piece of fabric around the body and then a very sheer black um, curtain. You, you know, you go into cheap shops and you can buy those, those really cheap sheer curtains. That's just a black sheer curtain. And um, the way that that was lit uh, allowed the light to go through it to bring out that silhouette. But it's something that I, um, I suppose I love to do in terms of making it all about the person as opposed to the, the blinging up of something on yeah. and, and adding a whole heap of different elements. This one's a little different. That is a maternity gown, but what I've done there is used blue tulle to wrap around her shoulders just to add a different element. So there's always a way for you to, you know, make something just that little bit more. I personally am not a, a you know, I'm, I'm not someone to create the big waving, flowing um, dresses. When what do you, you call see... those? <laughs> Nothing. Um, <laughs> when you see a, a, a pregnant woman standing there and, and it's very beautiful and then you see, you know, the fabric kind of flying out the back like that, that's... And the hair's dead straight. Yeah, it's something that I I don't personally um, do. I, I don't think it's always very flattering. I think it's more about the fabric. There are very few people that do it well um, in terms of the way that they add the fabric in and things like that. So when you are doing things like that, think about the person in the photograph and think about if you're going to add movement to material and fabric, make sure that there is movement in hair so that it's more realistic. It makes sense that there is movement in fabric. Someone has written in there a fart dress. So sometimes, yes, it does look quite bizarre why bits of fabric kind of just go flying out. And I mean, I've tried it on a few different occasions. I've even had a giant fan, uh, a <laughs> massive fan in the studio, which, which blew the fabric. So the fabric was held and then let go so that the, the wind of the fan um, caught the fabric and then obviously added all of that beautiful movement to the hair that I was after. So, alrighty, we've done with those pictures. The, um, the other thing is when you are working with your clients and you are thinking about creating something that's very different, you have to take into consideration how they want to be photographed. And this is probably the most important thing when you are working with pregnant women because they might look great, but often they don't feel great. Some women love being pregnant, some women can't stand it. It is a very special time to document for someone and that's why it's really important for you to communicate with them and have the conversation about how they want to be photographed. How much skin do they want to, to show? So what I always do in terms of that um, conversation leading up to the shoot is I'll say, what I want you to do is go to my Instagram have a look through, have a look on my website at my maternity portfolio and go through and choose a couple of photographs that really stand out and you know, are, are similar to the way that you would like to be photographed. Make it about them. The key words are how would you like to be photographed? What stands out to you? Yes, I'm the creative, I'm the artist, I'm the photographer, I'm the stylist, but I want to style her in a way that makes her feel amazing and look amazing the way she wants to look, which is always going to be, you know, paramount in my, in my studio when I'm working with, with clients. So if I've got photographs of, you know, um, setups using different pieces of material, that's easy for me. There are, I've got a wardrobe full of beautiful dresses. So obviously if that's what they're, they're after, then I've got them. So for me, it is more about just that very classic, simple, um, you know, very elegant way of making a woman just glow. Mm. And I don't do hair and makeup for my maternity shoots, if for anyone that, that was wondering. But what I do say to my clients is, you know, depending on the style and the look of the, the you know, the session, 
you would then obviously do your own hair and makeup or have someone do it for you. But I, I always highly recommend that they do their hair and makeup in a way that the same way they would if they were going out for dinner with their husband to a beautiful restaurant. You know, we all love to get dressed up and, and stuff like that. So I find it, you know, hard when they've spent a lot of money on hair and makeup coming to the session and they don't look like they normally look. So when you see photographs of a woman and it's hanging on her wall, you want that to look like her. So obviously there's some very fine art styled photos and people love to get glammed up. If that's, if that's what they want, then that's what you provide and you offer, offer advice based on what it is that they want in terms of the photos that they send you from your Instagram and your website. But it is about that communication. Um, oh, I love it when, yeah, as someone has just mentioned there, that they love it when their clients tell them that they make them feel beautiful. That is it. When someone feels beautiful, you see it. If someone is awkward or uncomfortable or isn't really enjoying the experience, you are going to see that on their face, on their expression and the way that they hold their body. Another few things to really consider when you are photographing pregnant women is to always make sure you tell them to eat breakfast the day of the shoot. Yeah. They can spend, they get busy, if they've got other kids, they're running around. Um, but when they're growing another human inside them, it's obviously taking a lot of their energy and a lot of their nutrients. And if you've got a woman standing still in one spot for an extended period of time and she hasn't eaten that day and she's been busy, um, or she isn't hydrated, then she could feel very faint. So always make sure that you check whether they're comfortable with the temperature. Is the temperature okay in here for you? Because some women can get hot. Always make sure that you have a stool close by for them to sit down and you don't have them standing in that one spot for a long period of time. Someone's just said a lesson learned from Italy. Absolutely, I had a model turn up and we were doing the maternity segment and what happened was she, it was two, two o'clock in the afternoon, I believe. Yeah. And she had not eaten all day. She had driven for nearly an hour and she had two kids that were literally out of control. They were so busy. So when I had her standing there in the room, she fainted, I had to catch her. And I was so consumed myself with the teaching process you know, I just assumed at two o'clock in the afternoon she would have eaten, but she hadn't. And that was something that was, it's never left my mind. Luckily I caught her, luckily she was okay. And we had lots of people on hand. We even had a nurse there, well, a pre, you know, a, a, a nurse from a previous life. So, if that makes sense. Um, someone who was a nurse in a previous time. <laughs> and so, yes, but it is really, really important the, someone said, yep, I caught her. That was crazy. It was very scary yeah, and it can be very, very dangerous. You have to be on your toes, but you've got to take everything into consideration. So having a stool close by, so in between setups, I always limit my sessions as well. I do two changes, that's it, because I don't offer a massive gallery of photos when it comes to maternity shoots. All right, so let's get started here with all of this fabric. Have a little bit of fun. Um, I do like to use soft fabrics like this around my clients because sometimes if you're using tulle or for example calico, it might not be that comfortable on their skin. So always make sure they're comfortable. Um, I use lots of different little things in my trolley. I have the, the smallest little zip ties and I have um, rubber bands, I have clamps to hold fabric in place, things like that. So what I'm gonna do here is just bring this around my client. And another thing, when you are communicating with them and you're talking to them about how they would like to be photographed, um, if they're sending you photographs or showing you photographs at the time of the session, you know, of someone who's wearing next to nothing, then you would, Photograph them that way, you know, how comfortable are you with, you know, with showing a bit of skin? Some women want to, some women don't. And that is entirely up to them. 
So yeah, if you guys have got any questions, pop them into the comments there. Garrett can ask me as I sort of It's make kind it. of amazing actually that you've draped that one bit of fabric, just stretched it around the torso and it drops like a beautiful dress. And yeah. like the angle that everyone's seeing right now. And we're done. There's a shot. <laughs> like that, that, that's, you know, to get your variety, why not? Yeah. That's so I'm just gonna use some rubber bands back here. You can use clamps and things like that, but you know, I find rubber bands tend to hold the fabric in place quite easy. Um, if you're using a big clamp, like, hang on, I'll pop that there. If you're using a big clamp like this, um, and, and it, then it sort of twists or turns with the way that your client is moving, that could stick into their back and be quite uncomfortable. So you always wanna make sure they're comfortable. When I'm talking to them prior to the session as well, I tell them to bring skin colored underwear. Good, that was the next question. <laughs> what undergarments do you recommend? Always skin color. So. So yeah, when they're using skin colored um, things, if, do you know, I am a, you know, a bit touchy feely, hands on when I am working with my customers and I will often say to them, do you know, are you okay if, if I, you know, if I pull this material, are you okay if I adjust that for you? Sometimes um, you will get a, a vibe off a client on whether or not they like being touched. Some people don't. So if you get that sense that you are working with someone who feels a little bit uncomfortable with you being, you know, more hands-on in styling, um, you know, just explain what it is that you're doing and why. So that's, um, that's something that is going to obviously really benefit you. Okay, so just that very, very simple bit of fabric there. And what kind of fabric is that? Is that... This is just like a t-shirt material. Four-way stretch? very, very um, soft stretch. And yes, it is a four-way stretch. Yep. So it's like an interlock, I suppose. And about how big is that piece of material, do you think? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'd say this is probably about two metres, two, two metres, metres. Yeah. just off the right. roll yep. and hasn't been hemmed. So yeah, it's just a really, really basic piece of material. Um, now, depending on obviously the type of clothes and things that they've got, I've put that around there just to sort of show you some different looks. Now this really, really soft tool works great and I'll do it with my arms because she doesn't have arms. <laughs> to kind of come up and create that height around the back there and to drape on the arms and then you can use it you know to sort of put around them to create that little bit of extra detail but um, what I often like to do when I'm working with fabric like this is I will start at one end and I will bring it around and cover the material. But the reason that I put the material around is so that I um, am covering obviously bits of skin and bra and underpants and it just makes my retouching so much faster. Kelly, do you ask them to bring a strapless bra? Do you know, if they don't have a strapless bra, I don't, they don't need to go out and buy one. I don't want my clients to you know, feel that they've got to go and spend more money. Um, if I say to them, if you have a strapless bra, skin colored strapless bra, that would be great. But you know what? A lot of my clients have had children before. And I mean, if they're anything like me, they can't wear a strapless bra. <laughs> it doesn't really work. So you're going to have some clients who want the really simple stuff and then others that just want to be, you know, all sort of glammed up. Somebody's just said there, who's that? Sam Carter. You should have definitely used Garrett. He oh, has what? arms. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm and busy right now. he would have right been now. perfect. I'm busy. He would have been perfect. So. In a few months, I won't even have a belly, so she won't be able to use me anymore. No, we are working hard in there, here in the office, Garrett, Rob and I. We're juicing and... I'm still having a pie every day, but <laughs> that's I'm, all. I'm, I'm hungry, so... Not a pie and a chips and a chocolate milk. <laughs> okay, so that's not going to be long enough there. So what I'll do is I'll just keep that here at the back and I'm just going to tuck it up underneath.
Okay, so this is where the rest of this jewel comes in for me to start creating the base of this outfit. So I'll just make a bit more room. So I would probably have, I wouldn't have her standing front on when you photograph a woman front on for a setup like this and that the pose will always come into the way that you are styling something as well. So for this particular pose, I probably have them more on their side. So I've got that outline of belly and then that's when I bring those shoulders around towards the camera. So they're sort of standing more on a, on a 45 degree angle towards my camera and then I can start to create that beautiful S shape with the body um, and then sort of style them that way. Is that yeah. a bit better? All right, so to get this to where I want it to be, I'm going to start sort of gathering it here and this is where I can tuck it up underneath and that's now, why this having... tool is probably about it's about six or seven meters of tool oh there's so much yeah but it was bought on a roll and if you just gather it up in places and pop it underneath but tulle is so light that as you start to come around I wish I had a real model <laughs> you know to show you the shape of the body and Gone the, the days won't be long So as I start now to kind of come around, I just want to basically gather it up and then create shape on the, on the ground. And you know what, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I wouldn't play like this with a client. I would try this out first so you know exactly where to put the fabric and what you're doing before your client actually gets there. That's what Kelly uses me for. Yeah. yeah. Or one of my kids, if I'm at home, <laughs> stand still. <laughs> but yeah, having that fabric come all the way to the ground um, with, a, with a client will help with creating that, um, that look. I'm just going to come around one more time here because I've got the ability to. I'll start to pull that out a bit. That's kind of cool that you haven't even made a cut in any of the fabrics. You're just going with it. Like. Yeah, and that's why I love working with fabric, I suppose, because it is so versatile. Like I could use this multiple different ways. The, the minute you start cutting your fabric and doing different things, you are going to, um, you know, then limit yourself in the future for what you could potentially create. Now, because I love to create shape with, um, with fabric in terms of the body, so if, if she's on her side like this, then behind her is where I want to create that shape. So I would pose them in this way and then sort of have them come back here. So as the sort of face, and then obviously have the light coming down this way, as the light falls off into the background, you're going to have all of that beautiful... Um, fabric behind the, the model that's going to continue with that shape because if you have a look from the top of the head as you come down through the body the leg comes up at the front and then as the leg comes back towards the ankle this way that line continues with the fabric. 
So when you're styling, there are a few sort of things you've got to keep in mind. All right, so I've got this bit here. You could just composite a head onto your model later, Kel. Oh, we totally could. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that suggestion, Rob Brown. <laughs> <laughs> So this is where I'd kind of just start to add in a bit more. So this is a cutoff piece. And what I'm going to do is gather that up in here so I get that shape. Pop it back up under there. And then create more shape out the back. And that really hasn't taken long to do. No. It's kind of amazing how effective it is too, like... Yeah, let's tie... It's not, um, it's not complicated, you haven't had to use any sewing techniques. No, I haven't, I haven't really secured the tool there either because I just want to do this real quick. But on a white background, this or a really... I've got a beautiful grey with some yellow tones in it. That's where I would see this particular setup working color wise okay so i've just secured that at the back with a clamp to make that work a bit better And then you could ruffle it however you want, but the thicker tool is what's going to give you um, the, the structure that you need to keep it nice and full. But yeah, I love it. Amy seems to think that you're going to start getting inquiries for dresses and wedding dresses. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of gathered it up and pulled it around. Obviously, I just gave it a tug then because I'm messing with it. But this is just stuff I have in the studio, so I'm always kind of thinking, what could I use that I've already got and reinvent it every time? So I'll have a play before a shoot, depending on the photos that my clients sort of sent me through. Yeah. And um, yeah, do we get a thumbs up? I think, I think that's a big thumbs up. Like, you've created something from, it's basically three bits of fabric. So you've got your stretch fabric, You've got the soft tool on top and then the harder tool down the bottom. Yeah. And it's stunning. Let's and it's try. unique as well. No one else has that. No, yes, this like is what I do the, love that's about the, fabric. The thing that you always um, you know, try and try and do is keep keep your photos unique and that even comes down to the things that you use in them. All right, I'm gonna show you another thing that you can do with this tool. Jen's just asked, do you have photo examples of a client that you've previously done? With this particular no. setup, no. No, um, this but is at just the beginning my of memory. the broadcast, we did um, show a few photos. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, hello, Siri. <laughs> she doesn't understand today. All right, so. Now, another thing I do love when I'm playing with tool is I, I am going to have to do it on myself here because it is a little hard. Oh, no, I'll do it on her. It'll be okay. <laughs> give it a whirl. Just give it a go, Kelly. Okay, so starting at one end, if you come around the back here, and let's just say she's got skin-coloured underwear on. If you come around here... And you could have this obviously already done before the shoot. And you could practice different things like this. If you've, I mean, get a cushion. If you've got a child, tall child, husband, <laughs> beer belly. Um, 
you could practice making some outfits and putting things together like this before a shoot so that you know that it's going to work and you've got a clear idea of what you're going to create. So I'm not going to cut my material, but this is where um, you know rubber bands and things like that work really well. So I'm just going to link two together to make it a bit longer there so that when I gather it, it's going to stay gathered. I'll just tie that off. I think the idea for this kind of thing is just to have fun, use your imagination and be different. So I wouldn't do this all the time, but I would certainly have a good go. You could bring them together just loosely there as well. Actually, I'd probably, doing this, have them a bit more to the side there, but you're not going to grope someone's boobs. <laughs> but you'd have it placed. So this is where so now... You ask first. Yeah, you're always yeah. asking. You would then come around. People are amazed that they, they um, you know, you've just got amazing talent. Is there anything that you can't do? Oh, yeah, there is a lot. <laughs> I just have a go. That's it. You yeah. don't know what you're capable of until you actually have a go. So I'm just pulling that through the back there after going around. So I'm just creating the top here. And I'm going to tie that off so that it stays firm and keeps that bit in the front there. And I'll just turn my girl oh. around. So I'm just literally pulling that through and tying it off. And shul has got that ability to sort of stay together there because yeah. of the, the type of material that it is. And then this is where you could bring this in. So if she's going to be on a 45 degree angle here and We'll make something with the rest of the chul for the skirt, but if you wanted to focus just on the top half here, you could bring this under, under this arm, <laughs> if that makes sense. So you'd have the arm come out, so it'd be like you'd, you'd bring it up underneath that back arm and around the back of the neck, and then you'd use that as that bit of extra fabric to kind of drape down that you could play with here around the shoulders. So we'll just pretend she's got arms. Because <laughs> at the back arm, you don't need to see anything draping. And then you would kind of have that come down and around the shoulders there. And that arm in here, if that makes sense. Yeah. It would be a bit like, like that. And then it'd cover all of this area as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that. Go away, Siri. Because Siri again. She's I busy. suppose one thing that you're always conscious about too is um, like the tops of ladies' arms and that sort of thing. Absolutely. And using a sheer fabric doesn't completely, you know, cover them up, <laughs> but it, you know, makes makes people feel that little bit more secure as well. Where does it end? Okay, so to do a bit of a, a skirt underneath her, depending on the look, if you want a nice big full skirt, um, you could totally do that or you could, you know, sort of again do what I did before, draping it down to the bottom. But if you kind of gather it, and this is where zip ties and things like that work really well or fishing line, if you've got a big sort of knitting needle um, that you can thread something quite large through, you could, Siri's feeling lonely, it sounds like <laughs> it, um, you could gather this up with a bit of material, I mean a bit of thread prior, but we'll just do it real quickly by hand here. Oh, 
I can't just wait to see everyone's projects after this. Oh yeah. Every oh, live, when, it's always so cool to see what, well, when we, what everyone um, does. When we get back to photographing clients, you guys are just going to be feeling so inspired to work with your clients and create photographs that they are going to love. And I think that is the key to a successful business is that communication. How do you want to be photographed? There are photographers out there that have amazing style. Do you know, they, they um, have the ability to create different looks and, and things and so I've kind of gathered that up there at the front and you would just kind of keep going there and coming around. But, you know, if I'm her arms, then obviously you'd come in and being photographed, you would put your hand in here to give it some shape as well, kind of gather that all up nicely underneath there and then have the rest of it come out. And what's your rule on hands and fingers over bellies? So the thing, I've got a bit of a belly, which I'm trying to lose at the moment, but, um, you really don't want the hand too low. If it's too low in the, the, the crotch area, then it doesn't look very nice. So you tend to shape a woman by, um, by lifting the leg and, and then that obviously hides the crotch, but then you don't want the hand all the way down there because you're going to lose it. So you tend to bring the hand back and when you bring the hand back on the belly, you create shape then between the, oh my top's a bit loose there, you, you create shape through the elbow and and the back and you can make them look a lot thinner that way. So yeah, definitely don't do down there and don't ask them to hold their breasts either. <laughs> um, that, obvious, that can often look quite Always looks uncomfortable. uncomfortable. So yeah, you can have a bit of fun with that. Keep gathering it around and draping it up and then obviously when that comes around the shoulder and then in the elbow, that can sort of finish that off by draping it that way. And we haven't cut it. Again. Yay. All right, so now I'm going to do the black one real quick. Actually, I'll do the flowers real quick. I do love fake flowers um, because you can create quite a few different looks with them. People love flowers. Do you do, do you do any classy sort of boudoir style sessions ever? No. Oh, with um, normal people? Um, like just not, not pregnant people? Maternity. Oh, sometimes. It depends on what they want and how intimate they want their photos to be. So it's just a matter of that communication with them. You know, obviously, um, when you're working with your clients, you've got to know, obviously, all of those things before you even pick up your camera so you can create the photos that they're going to be comfortable in. You don't want to make someone do something that they don't feel comfortable doing, um, especially if it's a couple shoot or something like that. So, And for me, I, I like to have that communication with them so that they feel comfortable with me being in their presence. Some people might not. So, yeah. All right. So these flowers are really soft to touch. The foam that covers the stem is soft. The petals are made out of a foam. Um, I wouldn't put a flower on someone's skin that was scratchy or, or the wire would irritate them. So that's why I love using this particular type of flower, but the texture and the tones in it is also really beautiful too. So if I was gonna use this on my client, I would want to create the shape around their body. So if I'm coming across here, and I would use fabric as well, you could do it without. I'm just gonna bend that there and have it at the back. And again, communicating with them the whole time. Is, is that okay? Does that feel all right? Is that comfortable? And Kelly, with maternity sessions, what sort of colors do you tend to go for? Well, it'll depend on what they send me, but I've got, 
with all my maternity dresses, I've got the basic colours like your cream, your black. I've got a beautiful red winey coloured one. I've got blues because most men turn up in jeans <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice and casual. So yeah, I've got all the basic colours and then with all of this stuff, I tend to stick quite neutral because if you are, you know, if you're using a very elaborate fabric or a colour or something like that and they want to frame it and put it on the wall, you want to make sure obviously if they've got a certain look in their home, like a decor, that it's going to go, go with that. So yeah, this is where you could start to kind of have a bit of fun in terms of shaping it around, around them as well and into, into their belly mm. and even coming down. Hang on, I'll get this one. Down around the shape of their belly here. I like that idea there. And then at the back, obviously, just using a clamp on your fabric that you've already got there. And then around the front. So two sort of different looks that you could do with that and depending on where they would put their arms. So if you're going to put something down there around the belly, then obviously you would have the arm up high. Um, if you're going to put something up the top here around and have it come down around the face, then this allows room for the hand to come down to the, to the belly that way. So yeah, flowers can make, make such a difference and yeah. give something a different look. Casey's, Casey's got a good question here on maternity sessions. So if a person turns up and they want several styles, um, you know, they want a milk bath, they want boudoir, they want classic looks. You're going to be there all would, day. <laughs> yeah, how would you handle that? Because so, you, well, you're quite is, good you, at communicating up front what's included. So would you do multiple sessions for them? Well, or? yeah, this is where I think you've got to be very specific with um, the information that you provide your clients when they first inquire what's included, what um, what do they need, and all of the information like that. So I would probably, and if they came to you with a million different ideas, I would just sort of say to them, um, even if you've told them that you only do two changes or one change, I do two outfits, that's all I do. So basically they then have to choose if they want a milk bath, they get a milk bath and then one outfit. So I would do the outfit first and then the milk bath, obviously, because they'd need a shower after it. But um, always take into consideration the time. Yeah, you could do the opposite shoulder if you want. It's entirely up to you. You are the creative vision. <laughs> All right. So this bit of black fabric, it's a little wider than the, um, than the cream. And I've just gone over the cream. You wouldn't do this with a client, but it's just going to save me time here. <laughs> when it comes to outdoor shoots, do you have any recommended colours there? Well, again, it depends on the person in the photograph. Um, you know, you have to think about the environment. If they've got a location, yeah. go, lo go location scouting. Have a look, what sort of plants, trees, bushes, what sort of other tones are within that environmental area. If it's autumn, you know, you might want to go with some beautiful um, warm tones in terms of yellows, golds or, or rusty kind of reds. If it's um, spring and you've got yellow flowers in a very green area, you might go yellow. I don't know. It depends on the location. So that's why location scouting is always going to be really important. I love a lot of the questions when it comes to um, the maternity sessions. Your first go-to always is, well, it depends on the client and what they want. Because it's that communication, I suppose, leading up to it that you can form ideas and bounce ideas backwards and forwards off each other. Yeah, and, and when you do that with a client, they feel like they've been heard. They yeah. feel like you've listened to them and they get excited at the prospect and it does help create the excitement. And you can kind of refine ideas that way rather than coming up with it on the spot and, you know, it might not have been you know, the best idea, but at the time, that's all you had. But I suppose pre-planning and talking and communicating does really help with that. Yeah, totally. 
So just that bit of fabric there on the ground. Now this does have a bit of wire in it. Obviously you would be extremely careful with that. And our um, little model here does not have arms. <laughs> So or you nerves, could, so she can't feel the pain. Yeah, you could actually have a lot of fun with this. Like I said, it is, um, hang on, I'll bring it closer a little bit here so you can see what it is. It is literally like a circle piece of fabric. It's like a mesh. It's a bit stretchy. It's soft. It's, um, it's not chul, but it's, it's got the same structure as chul in terms of the way that it's been created. So, and that wire around the outside, it's not really been bend it, bent or anything like that. It's just been threaded through and then you can bend it however you want. But this was a bit of fun. The front of it is shorter than the back. So what you could potentially do here is bring it over the front like this and have it come across the chest and then obviously gather it at the back and you would use a clamp or something like that. But yeah, I mean, I did get this off the bottom of a skirt, but you could make something like this. I just hem, it's just the edges hemmed. It's a circular piece of fabric. The edge is hemmed and, I mean, you could cut that down. Obviously you'd have a bit of a play there. I kind of like it when it comes up though. But yeah, even just that over the front with that wire is now giving that, actually, where's the, can you lift gonna, the yeah, backdrop? I'm going to do the remote thing. I think it might, is it in No. no? Find it. We'll lift the backdrop up so it's easier for you to see the shape of this. And before anyone asks, this backdrop system was purchased online. Um, was this one eBay or did yeah. we get this one from a supplier? This I one, uh, I can't remember. I think we've shared the link previously. Yeah. So, um, yeah. When it comes to uh, maternity clients that don't, uh, aren't quite showing and have a small belly, mm -hmm. you know, what do you, what well, do you do Well, that's okay. There? That's just the way that they look. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't tend to make them look bigger than what they are in post-production. Um, I do remove lumps and bumps and things like that. But yeah, I tend to kind of want them to look like them. So I use light and I pose in a way that's easier for them to, you know, so, so that it shapes them and gives them the, um, the beautiful curves that they have. Because some women just don't feel, you know, overly curvaceous at, um, <laughs> when they're pregnant. And what stage of pregnancy do you get your clients in? Um, I do between 30 and 36 weeks max. So yeah, you could then obviously have it come up and have the arms still coming down and you could frame it around them. But that is such a cool way to add something very different. I like the idea of having it sort of come up and around and um, create some sort of shape like that. Yeah or having it go and come down nice and low and it creates shape that way. Pretty cool. How cool is that? Do we like that? that one? It's the simplest thing though, like you're not, um, you're not concerned with what the actual purpose of the thing is, it's how can you use that to, to create those shapes and Yeah, you could buy unique. a bit of fabric like that, yeah. cut it in a circle, put a hole for the head or the arms and um, and hem it and thread some wire through it and create your own unique look, which would be really cool. So for the last look that I'm gonna do um, with all of this calico, I'm gonna be the person, I'm gonna be the pregnant woman. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a sitting one and she can't sit. All right, so I was thinking about this and how I would want to use that material to create a, a different look. Now this is just a, a normal sort of stool, so you could use an apple box, but obviously wanting your client to feel comfortable at all times. The, um, the thing is, with this particular setup, when you have a pregnant woman sitting, it can obviously, if they don't have good posture, it, it doesn't always look, you know, great. So when I get my models to sit, or my clients, I get them to kind of um, sit towards the edge of the chair and slide that leg out. And then that, what that does is 
it allows that belly to sort of really show. And then when you're ready to take that shot, you can get them to sort of really lift up and push, push forward. And um, you can use the back of the chair to create that shape or you can have obviously the hands placed wherever you want whatever you think looks good. You could also, to create even you know, more shape and separation of the legs, lift that back knee up, but it is all about opening up that space and letting that belly kind of sit forward. So they have to arch their back to come forward to see that belly. But you do always need to make sure that they are comfortable at all times. If you've got some ideas for maternity shoots, you know, get some models in, create the looks that you want so that you can fill your portfolio and your galleries with the style of photos that you love to create. And then when people find your website, if they like that style, they'll book you. Yeah. All right, so this is just literally a lot of material. I had a wonderful idea to photograph someone recently with this material and um, it didn't kind of work out um, because when she turned up she'd forgotten to shave her legs and she didn't really want to show them and I wanted to show some beautiful leg <laughs> <laughs> in the setup. She was a model. Okay so I've got one end here and you can see I've kind of draped it around the front there so it's important that this one end stays up here because that's the bit that's going to come around me. So literally all that's needed underneath the fabric is a bra and um, underwear. And then the rest will be the material. So I would bring some down around the front here, but literally just drape it all around. And you're, you're trying to hide the chair, obviously as much as you can. And I would do this, you know, on a backdrop of a similar sort of colour and tone. Mm. So yeah, there's been a couple of people asking, you know, do you, have you got any photos of people with the different setups that you've done? These are all unique. This is me being challenged to create something different and coming yeah. up with an idea and a concept to share with you to show you that anything is literally possible. Yeah. All right, so let me take my thongs off. <laughs> they are also called flip-flops in other parts of oh, the world. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. My apologies. <laughs> so the back leg could be underneath the material, but the front leg you really want to have kind of out and with that pointed toe. So you want to continue with that shape, but obviously make sure that the, um, the foot's not covered. Yes, this fabric, fabric is uh, calico. Yeah. So I'm just going to gather that up. And I never had maternity photos. <laughs> Robert tried to take some photos of me once, but when I was pregnant with the twins, I looked like a whale, so I wasn't really interested. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where you could create something like this with that leg and that belly and you could have that sort of coming down like that as well and, um, and leaning forward. You like? Yeah. And then you would kind of, you could put something underneath the fabric at the back to raise that up. <laughs> no, definitely not taking my underwear off. <laughs> but yeah, the idea is to though cover the breasts here so you might want to attach it there and you can get little clips or you could have them just hold it with their hand. So you've got the material down here all sort of gathered up and then you'd give this a bit of a shoulder here like that. You could give it a bit more length actually. And give that a bit more shoulder and then as you bring this in with that hand, have that sort of hand there holding here so you're not sharing, showing any, any breasts. 
and then that's going to cover the thigh and then you're going to have the belly kind of coming out here and that's where you kind of get them then to sort of sit forward and bring that foot up and point that toe and you could have the hand back here or you could have it down here wherever you want. Mm. Are we happy? I think so and you could do a variety <laughs> of different things with that um, with that with that fabric as well so you've just done a sitting down you could do on the floor you could do standing up do you know what else you know. i'm gonna i'm gonna do one more of course so sorry i don't apologize everyone's loving this and it's maintained over a hundred people the whole way through so Holy i think this sucks. is something that people just love watching it's lots of fun it's crafting it's playing When I saw Aldi had mannequins on sale as well. Aldi's? Yep. Okay. So you can find the middle. And you could just make... Do you know what else is a really great thing to have um, in your studio? Shoulder pads. Velcro shoulder pads. If you're in the, in the, um, like the sewing store, so I would have this sit across the back of the shoulders like that. And then if you attach a couple of little Velcro dots that you can take off later, and then you can put your Velcro shoulder pads on, it's going to give you really great structure to create that, that nice straight broad shoulder and as it comes down and flows. And you could steam this fabric. Obviously, there's a lot of it here. I've just had it rolled up in a big ball, so that's why it's all crushed. But I kind of like that, that organic look. So Brenna's asked, how would you adapt this to a teenager? Oh, you could you make a crown. Mm. My gold crown. You could, um, you could do a beautiful shot of a teenager. I did one on Creative Live of a teen and she came in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and I just used fabric and I made her into a princess. Mm. I suppose the difference between maternity, you want to make them feel beautiful and you know the the best that they've felt in their entire life whereas I suppose a teenager it's more about How? strength and beauty and yeah um, it's a bit of a different sort of message so I suppose it all comes down to the posing as well so I've got and calico tends to hold its sort of shape there but I've literally just folded it over at the top here to give it that double thickness as it comes across the back of the shoulders. And then if you have the shoulder pads, if you can get the double thick shoulder pads, the, the biggest ones you can get, they'll help it stay in place on, on your model. And then you could photograph her front on. She looked great. So beautiful. How cool is that? Yeah, so with that much fabric, definitely go for something cheap. Yeah, calico. Um, I think this entire roll cost me $60. Yeah. Um, it's so cheap. You could dye it if you wanted a different colour, but I love all these organic sort of tones and, and textures there. All right. Have we got any more questions? That is a lot of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, let's try and show a close-up of the fabric. Somebody's just asked that. Yeah, it's cotton. It's organic. End up to this camera here, Kelly. 
It is all organic. And you can, a lot of calicos, you can actually see the, um, like the, the natural fibres and stuff in it too, so. Yeah, it's cotton, 100%, I believe. Yeah, and it's not the softest fabric in the world when it's, well, it's not pretty, washed. It's pretty soft, but it's got structure to it, so, yeah. it, so it holds its shape quite well when you're placing it. Cool. But yeah, that's, um, I like that look. I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> but yeah, a couple of bits of fabric. And you could, you, they're just so versatile um, in terms of the, the different looks that you could create. So you could have a lot of fun with things like that. Yeah, play around with colours and that sort of thing and make it suit your style. This would be beautiful in black and white. That leads me to tomorrow, yes, Australian dollars. Um, we're going to do converting images to black and white tomorrow and, you know, what to look for in a, in a beautiful black and white, what images look great in black and white, what don't and how to make them nice and punchy and use all of the, the beautiful um, detail within a, within a photograph and bring all of that out, converting to black and white. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm hot now. <laughs> that was a workout. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for joining me guys. That was a bit of fun. I hope it does inspire you. Like I had literally walked in today and I'm like, right, I've got tulle, I've got calico, what am I gonna create? And I had gone onto Pinterest, I had looked at some ideas, I'd looked at some previous photographs of mine, and I went, well, this is easy. I've done it before, don't overthink it. I had to say to myself, which is a really good thing to remember for yourselves, but sheer fabric always works really well. Um, bits of fabric like this that you can wrap around to create that beautiful shape, and and that are soft, that are gonna make your customers feel comfortable. So yeah, if you want to try different techniques, get some models in when you can, when you're back open and trading, um, and then fill your portfolio with the way that you want to photograph. You know, focus on your style, what you're naturally drawn to, and uh, create beautiful photographs that you know your clients are gonna love. All right, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I don't even know how many different looks we just did. I think we did two with the tulle, two with the calico, and obviously one, um, oh, and then we did flowers, and then we did the black, so we had Maybe a little bit of fun. about seven. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of fun. All right, see you guys. Have a great day. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow.